Isolationism has never served this country well. Whenever we turn our back on Europe, sooner or later we come to regret it. If we vote to leave the EU, we will not be voting to leave Europe. Uh, I think it would be a profound mistake, not just for security in Europe and our economic prosperity, but also for who we are as a nation. With just over a month to go before the UK referendum on whether to stay in the European Union, both the Remain and the Leave camps are ramping up their campaigns. At an FT event this week, the Chancellor tried to put forward a convincing case for why the country should vote to stay. There are 285,000 jobs connected with financial services exports to the European Union. That means tens of thousands of those jobs potentially could be lost if we uh, leave. And it's just yet another example of a major industry, not just in London, but a major industry in many, many cities around uh, the UK that would be badly hit and people's jobs would be lost if we left. In my judgment, I've been the country's chancellor for six years, I think it would be a very big mistake for us to leave. What major international financial institution thinks this is a sensible decision to leave? I would absolutely urge businesses who feel strongly about this issue, who understand how it might affect their business, to speak up and take part in what is, after all, you know, a unique event. I mean, this is the moment when we make this huge decision about our country's future, uh, and I'm sure people wouldn't want to think after the event that they sat it out. But is the Chancellor's message getting through to the business community and to the British public? I think he put a persuasive case on the economics of staying uh, in Europe. And I think what was interesting to me that is that he discussed his vision for engagement with Europe after the referendum. And he, he put uh, a, a very positive uh, uh, point regarding uh, UK engagement and influence in Europe post the referendum. I think the intellectual case is being made rather well. They are establishing that there are large benefits in being part of the European Union and therefore the costs of leaving will be very high, that the uncertainty created by leaving will be very great, that we simply don't know what will happen if we do vote to leave, it'll be chaos, there'll be large economic costs. So I think the, the basic framework of the argument has been made well, both in terms of the positives and the negatives. And beyond that, I think they've made the right case about our role in Europe and, uh, and our role in stabilizing the continent in which we are in unavoidably uh, linked, in which we are connected. Um, the question, of course, is will this work politically? I suspect most people aren't really paying attention. They're only going to pay real attention in the last week or two or three. It's quite a sophisticated argument, quite a complicated argument. Are they making it in a, a way that is effective politically, particularly for those who are wavering? That, I'm afraid, we won't know until the referendum has happened. The Chancellor also took the opportunity to remind people exactly what is at stake in the June 23rd vote. If the country votes to leave, be in no doubt, we are leaving. Right? There's not some second referendum. This is not you know, the, the country you, you will have voted to leave and the process of leaving will be triggered immediately. You play with at your peril uh, the construction of multilateral institutions of democratic states. They are difficult to put together and uh, essentially we would be leaping into the dark. And uh, I don't think in an uncertain and unstable world that's a sensible thing to do. As the Brexit debate heats up, former London Mayor Boris Johnson is doing everything in his power to convince the British public that their future is brighter outside of the EU. I believe we would be mad not to take this once in a lifetime chance to walk through that door, because the truth is, it is not we who have changed, it is the EU that has changed out of all recognition. The war of words between the Remain and Leave camps is likely to become even more intense in the final weeks before the referendum. Vanessa Cordicas, Financial Times, London.